biological mother or a spiritual mother. God bless you one and all. Amen. Praise the Lord. Father God, we thank you for every opportunity that we have to come and see our house of worship. Father, we love you so much. We're excited about what you're going to do in our lives today, Father God. We thank you for your word going forth, for your word will never return unto you void, Father God, but will prosper in that thing where to you said it. Father God, I just thank you, Lord, for your healing anointing today flowing out to Joshua Chetty. I declare that by the stripes of Jesus, he is healed totally and completely. I thank you, Lord, for removing all fear from him and from his parents. So, Father God, I trust is in your word. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we thank you for our pastors. We thank you for the members of this body of believers. We thank you, Father God, for Jesus Christ, who is our Lord and Savior. Thank you for the Holy Spirit, who is our constant companion who teaches us how to live the victory that Jesus Christ died for us to have. Lord, we love you with all our heart, mind, and soul. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Today we're going to conclude our teaching on women of the Bible. We've talked about Deborah, who was a judge of Israel for 40 years. She was an awesome judge, one of the best judges that Israel ever had. We talked about Abigail. Abigail was a wise woman who dealt wisely with King with David to keep him from destroying not just her people, but from destroying himself by trying to exact vengeance. Vengeance belongs to God. Amen. Amen. We also talked about Esther, who was a very courageous queen who stood in the gap for her people by approaching the king. At the time, she could have been killed for just going into the king's presence right. without him having called her. But Esther said, if I perish, I perish. Yes. Uh, and then we talked last week about a- uh, Rahab. Yes. Rahab was a prostitute. And from her story, we learned that, you know, God will take the, 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 uh, the uh, what people call silly and what people call base and what people call unworthy, those kind of things in the world, and he'll use them to his glory. Yes. And Rahab believed him in the God of Israel. And because she believed that, her and her family were saved when Joshua came and destroyed uh, Jericho. So these have been some awesome women that we've been talking about, but you know, no study of women would be complete unless we mention some of the bad girls of the Bible. And perhaps you know the most evil woman in the Bible was who? Jezebel. Jezebel. Yes, ma'am. Jezebel was an evil queen, and that's what we're going to talk about today. Jezebel is a name that has become synonymous with treachery and evil. Her name is used to label shameless and deceitful women. You ever hear anybody say about a woman that may have been dressed kind of provocatively or, or sexy or whatever you, word you want to use, and they'll say, look at that old Jezebel. <laughs> you know, that, they have, that name has been used to label women. Even though Jezebel was the epitome of evil, She was also powerful, she was cunning, and she was arrogant. She did not worship the God of Israel. She did not worship the Most High God, and that was her downfall. Instead, she worshipped the pagan fertility gods, Baal and Asherah. People that worship these two gods, they engage in perverted sexual behavior. They engage in orgies and self-torture and sacrifice. Jezebel was so determined to convert Israel to her own religion that she hunted down the prophets of God and she had all of them killed. She then replaced these godly prophets with 450 evil prophets of Baal and 400 prophets of Asherah for a total of 850 ungodly prophets. So she killed all God's prophets, and she raised up her own evil prophets. Jezebel was the daughter of Ethbel. She was married to Ahab, who was the king of Israel at that time. He is known as the most evil king that ever ruled in Israel. And she was just as evil as he was, so that had to be some combination. As I said before, Jezebel was a powerful, strong-willed woman. She was dominating and ruling, not just over her people, but over her husband. Mm-hmm. Let's look at 1 Kings, the 16th chapter. 1 Kings 16, and we're going to look at verses 30 through 33. And we're talking about Jezebel, the evil queen. 1 Kings 16 
verses 30 through 33. If you have a say, amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Now Ahab, the son of Omri, did evil in the sight of the Lord, more than all who were before him. What a terrible legacy that is, mm. to be remembered for how evil you were. Okay. Verse 31. And it came to pass as though it had been a trivial thing for him to walk in the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, that he took his wife Jezebel, the daughter of Ethbal, king of the Sidonians, and he went and served Baal and worshipped him. Verse 32. Then he set up an altar for Baal in the temple of Baal, which he had built in Samaria. And Ahab made a wooden image. Ahab did more to provoke the Lord God of Israel to anger than all the kings of Israel who were before him. Ahab was so evil that he not only joined uh, Jezebel in her idol worship, but he also built a, a, a temple for Baal, and he built a pole of worship for Asherah, who was Baal's partner. <laughs> Ahab established Baal as the state religion of Israel, leading the whole nation into sin. How many of you know that God was not pleased with Ahab? The worship of idol gods was a total rejection of the one true living God. However, the prophets of Israel refused to worship the idol of God. Why? Because they knew that Jehovah was the only true God. Mm -hmm. These prophets of Israel were led by the prophet Elijah. Let's look at, uh, skip down to 1 Kings 